Bangladesh is on the boil again. Fresh clashes have erupted between protesters and supporters of the ruling Awami League in Dhaka. As thousands of protesters thronged central Dhaka Square to demand the resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. That's their one-point demand. Now, according to reports, at least eight people have been killed in fresh protests. According to reports, clashes broke out this morning when protesters attending a non-cooperation program to demand the, the government's resignation faced opposition from the supporters of the Awami League, Chhatra League and Jubo League activists. Eyewitnesses claim several cocktail explosions occurred during the incident. According to the police and doctors, many sustained knife cuts and bullet wounds in the deadly clashes. At least 20 people were rushed to the Dhaka Medical College Hospital. While hundreds of students and professionals gathered at Dhaka's Shahbag, blocking traffic on all sides, the protesters under the banner of the anti-discrimination students' movement chanted slogans calling for Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's resignation and justice for those killed in the recent violence surrounding the quota reform protests. Bangladesh Railway has decided to suspend all types of train operations on Sunday. Internet services are also to be suspended. Meanwhile, Bangladesh INB Minister Mohammad A. Arafat released a video of mobs attacking released videos of mobs attacking places like hospitals this morning. He said that the protests show true colours of protesters. All right, to get more insight on this, we are now being joined by executive editor of Dhaka Tribune, Riaz Ahmed. Thank you so much for joining in, sir, and uh, making time for us. Uh, of course, it's a tense time in Bangladesh. I wanted to understand from you with the current protests, and they're strongly aiming for the prime minister to step down. It's their one-point demand. Do you foresee a regime change at the end of this? Yeah, it is very difficult for me to uh, uh, foresee or foretell that. But th this much I can say that this, as you have been following as well, the whole world have been following that this quota movement have been going on for um, for weeks now in this state and also in the past in different years in 2013, 14, also in 2018. So the the issue no more remains the quota. It becomes an issue of use of excessive force to you know, while uh, containing this movement which was uh, actually at at various point the government itself said that they are also supportive to the students who are waging movement for the quota i mean quota has been discriminatory in the government job so that uh, everybody was on the same uh, that uh, level that uh, in thinking that that has to be rationalized but in the process, the use of excessive force from the state apparatus actually resulted in the killings of more than, in the most conservative estimate, more than 200 people. And a large number of them are young students of uh, college and university. So that actually uh, changed the whole scenario here. And uh, the students, leaders who have been waging this movement they think now they have been deceived in the name of uh, having dialogues, in the name of uh, um, paying heed to their demands of justice and things like that. Why they thought like that is because, the first of all, there was a huge crackdown which saw this, this much of bloodshed that Bangladesh have never seen after 1971 mm -hmm. war for liberation. And then in the successive week, they saw that 11,000 people have been arrested and many of them are students. Though government gave commitment that student, students will not be harassed just because of participating in the movement for quota reform. But in reality, they saw that that's not the case. Thousands of them are being arrested and uh, mm, the, the prospect of 
getting justice was, was not not visible up until that time. Only yesterday we saw that two policemen were suspended for the killing of Abu Said, who Mr. became a actually yeah yes very, yes. I'd, I'd uh, like the, to just come in there. The, the, the protesters have found support from some former military officers as well. And that includes ex-Army Chief General Iqbal Karim. And while the current Army Chief, Wakir Uz Zaman, told officers at the military headquarters in Dhaka that the Bangladesh Army is the symbol of trust of the people, quote-unquote. Now, there is no further explanation of what that implies. My question to you is, does this add a layer of complexity to the matter? Are there chances of the military's allegiance to the government being in question? Actually, uh, up until today, the government actually um, using the the police, the paramilitary, BGP, and also, as you yes. know, that a party is still going on, and there is a uh, army uh, personnel are also posted in different places for the for the sake of containing uh, law and order situation, controlling law and order situation. But at at uh, what point the, I mean, the, uh, we don't know yet that what inside stories are actually, they, they have been uh, holding meetings uh, for past few days. As you mentioned, there was a meeting, that's forces internal meeting that held yesterday and uh, the ISPR, that uh, the, the release that issued ISPR, that was very much uh, was like that uh, army as any any forces in any country would say that they will be protecting the lives of the people and they will be always on the side of the country and its people. Uh, so Mr. that Ahmed, that's there. Yes, the today brief... we had a today okay, we okay, had a Please come meeting yourself, with yes. the PM. Yeah, the uh, the PM had a meeting with uh, our national security officials, which included our uh, uh, security advisor as well as the chiefs of the uh, armed forces. So that meeting, as up until now, as I am talking to you, was still in progress. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that was quite lengthy meeting going on. But so far, we just got a few lines from what PM has said, but not further details. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, what she has said, We've been seeing visuals yeah. that have been coming in and of course these visuals are, these are violent protests and they are in thousands of the students and the protesters, they're all out on the streets. You're in Dhaka, I right. wanted to just understand from you, just give us a first-hand account of how are things moving in the city or as far as you can understand from your sources on ground, uh, you know, how yeah. impacted is regular life for everyone else who's not part of the protest, how arrested or how much of a consequence have the protests had on the lives of regular people? in Bangladesh, in Dhaka specifically, where you're speaking from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As you know, that they, they, they have gone for a one-point movement since mm. yesterday, and as part of it, they started from today, non-cooperation movement, which means that they asked, they urged the people of the country to actually uh, not to go to offices, not to pay their utility bills and things like that. And they, are, uh, they urge not to operate the public transport movements on the roads. And exactly, almost nearly like that's happening uh, on the ground. You see that happening, uh, okay. We are seeing, but yes. on top of it, what's happening that in, in their enforcement of that non-cooperation movement, they are taking uh, to the streets at different places. And, uh, and out of those different places, there are several places where they are facing resistance. And at places, the resistance are kind of coming from both sides, from the uh, state's law enforcers and also from the student front and the main party the, of the ruling, uh, main ruling party activists. And at places, they, they were armed. On the other hand, we have seen also there are uh, sticks on the hands of some of the protesters, so violent uh, violence going on at different places. It's definitely a you tough time. Say that very outstate, yes. there are several people have killed already. It's a, it's a very killed. tough time for the country. Of course, these protests have been going on for several weeks now, and the resurrection of the protests that we've seen today in this form, it seems to be becoming more and more adverse for the regular life. But of course. 
He is hoping that his peace and calm, which is achieved at the earliest. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing all your insights. You're there in Dhaka. You're seeing it better than anyone else reporting from any other state. But uh, thank you for sharing all your insights. That was Mr. Riaz Ahmed, Executive Editor at Dhaka Tribune, joining us from Dhaka. Thank you.